everybody. Welcome back to Nick and Eli Talk at You, episode number seven. It feels like it's been an absolute lifetime since I've last talked to you, Eli, even though it's only been uh, a week. <laughs> it's been a long week, Eli. <laughs> uh, Nick. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh, no, oh. Sorry. you're a good boy. <laughs> For the record out there, I'm trying to be a good boy and not... Literally three words into the episode. <laughs> but I think it's very apropos for what's going on. Yeah. What the F is going on in this country, man? Yo, it is... I mean, it's not like it's new, right? I think that's kind of the issue. So just yes. to recap to everybody. So in the last, you know, on Memorial Day, uh, George Floyd, a guy from Minneapolis in Minnesota... Uh, was killed by cops, by a guy kneeing him in the neck for like eight minutes, some crazy number. Yep. There's a really sad video of it happening. Uh, he was pleading to them. He couldn't breathe. He was calling them sir, which like bothers me on a whole nother level. Um, and since then, there's been a bunch of protests, both in the U.S. and not in the U.S. There's been riots. There's been some looting. Uh, all over the place. So in Minneapolis, but also in New York and LA and all over. Um, and I mean, now it's going on about a week and a half. Uh, and it's just been, it's just been crazy. And like, there's no sign of, of, of any relief. It's like, I don't know if you've been seeing all the videos of like more police actions, but, but that's the thing. It, it's kind of, it's like a, like an Ouroboros. It's kind of just feeding into it itself. Yeah. Right, like, you're the like the whole thing was, you know, police brutality, and it's just triggering even more police brutality. Yeah, because that's all I see on my feed. Yeah, I'm looking, and I, I I'm trying not to look at it. You know, I'm already losing my mind, mm -hmm. like everybody else who's been trapped at home for three months now, whatever, you know, however long it's been exactly. And it's like, I, I like, okay, to get back to Mr. Floyd, like, fine, they had to detain this guy because he was su such a threat. I'm using air quotes, right? The guy simply couldn't have lifted his knee and moved it three inches on his shoulder blades. Yeah. Like, that's it. You still have him, you know, secured. Mm -hmm. But now, okay, I'm going to put my knees on his shoulder blades. That's it. Three inches. You couldn't do that? Yeah. And it's, it's just the idea. It's just the idea of, like, you know, even though, okay, yeah. So let's say something happened where he needed to be arrested. I don't know what the case is. I know they said he was potentially using counterfeit money, whatever. Yeah. Right. It's like when someone says they can't breathe or something hurts, like you need to listen to them. Right. It's like, doesn't matter what they did. Like there's this level of humanity that exists that you need to respect, which is not being respected. And yeah. And it's just like, so And what I don't, what I can't comprehend. Okay. For example, let's say you and me, are at a park, right? Mm -hmm. And we get into a violent fight, right? Big violent fight. <laughs> and we're kicking each other's asses. <laughs> and I see somebody recording. I'll be like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I, I know for a fact, because this literally happened to me before. Mm -hmm. When I got into an altercation where I kicked some guy's ass <laughs> on, the, on the train, because this guy was uh, a total douche, and uh -huh. he shoved my daughter's um, little stroller. Oh, my God. Like, I was waiting to get into the train. You know how you wait on the side of the doors? Yeah. Right? And I was waiting. He was to my left. I was next. And he shoves my my daughter's um, on stroller. And all I did was I, I said, what an a-hole. Yeah. And he turned around and goes, no, you're the a-hole. <laughs> and I, I blanked. I gave the, I, I gave Hulk, the Hulk rage. I, pretty much. I, I gave the, the, shopping, the shopping cart. I gave the stroller to my wife. And I went to I went, went at this guy. Wow! I did what I had to do, but the minute I heard, and this, this is just going back to the topic, the minute I heard somebody goes, "Oh, somebody get the cops," I'm like, "I'm good." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, "I'm good," and I set my I set my, my eyes down. Yeah. But what I don't get is it, they saw they're being recorded. How does that? What the hell? Like, how is it you're being recorded? You're asphyxiating this poor guy, and that don't do nothing to trigger any kind of Pavlovian response in your brain to, whoa, I should stop. Yeah, I mean, or, I th oh, I'm being recorded. Let me pretend to be good at least. Well, I think, I mean, that that's the problem, right? It's like there's such an ingrained, uh, like, understanding of not getting in trouble 
or like not being held to your actions because it's not just people recording it's like right now like so many cops are supposed to have body cams on them because we're supposed to be able to see what they're doing and and say this is appropriate or inappropriate uh and there are videos from protests from the past week of cops covering their their camera as they as they do things they they shouldn't be doing as they pepper spray people sitting in their cars and stuff (laughs) um yeah i don't i mean i think it's just a completely pervasive understanding of you know what's the worst can happen i'll go on desk duty you know what's the worst that can happen they put me on administrative leave with pay like those aren't bad things imagine imagine anything that you could do that is an infraction at your job or at my job, you know, it's exactly something that could get me fired or get you fired or get me, you know, suspended without pay. It's so minor compared to killing a person, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, but that's the whole thing where if I, if in my job, let's say, again, I, I work for the school bus industry, but let's say somehow I restrained one of my drivers, mm-hmm. you know, and I did the same thing, I put my knee on his neck and I, and I murdered the gentleman. I wouldn't be let go. I wouldn't be no. terminated. I'd be arrested and charged right away. And the only reason why these piece of monkey poop police officers were, you know, given charges is because of all these all, all the crap going on right now. If not, nothing would have happened. Yeah. And like and that's and like, what I, I can't comprehend. Yeah. And I, I was thinking back, you know, because when we talk about George Floyd and all the stuff now, a lot of the things that come up are like recent events, right? So uh, oh, and this is embarrassing them for getting names, but uh, the guy in New York who was choked out for he was selling Lucy's. Yeah. Um, the things that happened in Ferguson, right? Trayvon Martin. But this goes way back, right? Like I remember when I was growing up on Long Island, Amadou Diallo. Do you remember Amadou Diallo? Forty one shots. Yeah, Amadou Diallo got shot forty one times. Cops are shooting and reloading on this guy. It's like. I mean, and it goes way back even further if you want to get into slavery and Jim Crow and stuff. But I mean, like, if we pulled out just, a list, which we don't have, no, because we did not prepare. The moment, <laughs> because yeah, this is kind of spur. But if we had a list. It's, 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 it's insane. Yeah, like that one video again, where we're being horrible with names, where the guy, the the the, the guy had a, a carry concealed permit and he had a weapon on him. Mm-hmm. He was in the car with his with his girlfriend and a little kid, and he still got lit up. Yeah. When you tell the cop, listen, I got a, you know, I got a gun on me. I have a permit. It's illegal. And he still gets lit up. But yet all these white folks with arm to the teeth with automatic rifles. And 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 they'll say, oh, but, they, they, you know, it's about the threatening posture. I've seen the videos. These guys look like little anger goblins. Yeah. And they're yelling and screaming. But if, God forbid, these guys were, you know, black mm-hmm. or brown. Or some 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 sort of questionable religion, like if they had a turban on their head or something, they probably would have been lit up as well. Yeah. And I just okay, you know what, Nick? Yeah. Just to you know, because I've known you for a long time. Um, people might not know. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll let people know. But we were incommunicado for a while. Yeah. Okay. But I remember you being we got a big fight. The most, <laughs> <laughs> the most kumbaya, sob, peace loving hippie that I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> Is that still the case? Yes. Right. I mean, okay. So to give some context, we got we had a falling out over over the the of over gun ownership, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm still very much a pacifist as it comes to gun ownership, but I don't. You know, I I I think it's important to to recognize that since I'm white, uh, <laughs> I have been raised in thinking that cops are good, fine. You know what I mean? Uh, so like, I think, and I've been thinking about, about our fight all those years ago in context of these things. And it's like, you know, uh, one of the points that, that you had raised is like, yo, if something happens, like, I'm not going to be trusting the cops to come and (laughs) protect me. (laughs) And I think, and I think, you know, I've done some growth on thinking about that. And I think it's true. I don't know if I think owning a gun helps that or harms in kind of the long run. But I, I completely no. I completely agree that uh, you know there are definite issues with policing and I don't think that some I don't think that purely peaceful protests have endpoints that are helpful all the time. 
So, uh, you know, how many years have people been protesting peacefully? Black Lives Matter and, you know, Occupy Wall Street, like all these things that have been peaceful for the most part, you know, uh, where nothing's been done, right? Like the 1% is still the 1%. People are still scrubbing around for crumbs, you know, black people are being killed by the cops, uh, unarmed and without any sort of justification. And I think sometimes, you know, the protests need to get a little little bit intense and that's what's been happening and there's been some results right the cops have been charged uh those charges have been upgraded as the protests have continued yeah and and what's really scary is that it's it's just providing more and more evidence of how insane police behavior is like i i spend maybe an hour every day just watching videos of that night you know what the cops have been doing so i saw one last night there was a guy in his car with his pregnant girlfriend and I seen that one. You saw that one. They weren't in the protest. They were in, <laughs> stuck in traffic. Just and driving. the cops the cops shot a tear gas canister at the car. The guy came out, you know, angry, first amendment saying, "What the f? I'm in yep. my car with my pregnant girlfriend. Why are you doing this? I'm just trying to get through here." And then the cops with their pepper ball paintball guns like lit the car up. Like so many shots into that car of just two people. There was a video this morning that I saw that was pretty graphic in Buffalo. Oh, Did you see this one? No, uh, I, I woke up very late. <laughs> 70 year old guy in a mask, like coronavirus 70 mask. Year? 70, seven zero. Oh, okay. 70 year old guy, uh, <clears throat> like kind of walking down the street. He is old and tall, but he's not like chanting. He's not throwing anything. He doesn't have a sign or anything, just some guy. And there's like a big like cadre of police in there riot gear with their shields and stuff mm -hmm. coming down the street this guy does nothing the 70 year old guy does nothing a cop pushes him he falls to the ground hits his head on the sidewalk and then there's just blood coming out of the back of his head like it's a video game like <laughs> now he he's in the hospital he's in stable condition so if you see the video the guy is going to be okay hopefully i mean he's in the hospital but like he was not doing anything. <laughs> wow. Like the people are not the enemy of the police. Like it's not just because you're out doesn't mean you are a victim for the police to assault. <laughs> it's absolutely and like, insane. And like I get it. The, the same thing goes for um black people, white people, whatever, purple, pink, orange. There's going to be bad seeds in any group of in in anything. Yeah. Politicians. There's some good politicians, but the majority of a bunch of Dicks. <laughs> but it's, you know, th there are some good people. But what I don't get is this. Um, I know, like, for example, my, uh, you, you, you know, your dad. Yeah. His, uh, his brother's a NYPD police officer. Uh-huh. And I know he's a good guy. You know what I'm saying? He's a good guy. So I don't, you know, I don't, you know, put him amongst these other, you know, pieces of crap that are doing all this stuff. But the thing is, why don't the good police officers say something. Yeah. Even anonymous. Like, I get it. Like, me and my job, like, you know, I ain't no rat. Yeah. I don't like being a rat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't. I'm not a rat. But now, if it was something, but mind you, I work for a school bus company. I'm not in law enforcement yeah. where people's lives hang on my decisions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the same but time, I, I know you're no rat, but you work in an industry where there's a lot of children. Right. And mm -hmm. like, if you knew someone was doing something inappropriate to a, chi to a kid, you no would question. say, you would say no something, no even question. if it was anonymous or not, you would say something because no question. That's what you no do. Question. If you know that yep. someone is, is abusing their position, you know, if they're a driver or whatever, they're oh, not like, I'll give you an example right now. A driver came up to me and told me, Oh, um, ex child. Um, when he, when we got to his house, he started crying saying he didn't want to go. Hmm. And the driver told me, oh, this happened several times. And I did, you know, my procedure in our, in, in my, at least in my company, I'm pretty sure every company is, we speak to the safety. You know, the, there's a, there's a, 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 a branch of the company, the safety people. Yeah. They're in, tra in charge of like traffic and this and that, you know, anything that doesn't pertain to just driving yeah. and transporting yeah. students. So I went to her and I told them, blah, 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 the child's name. And from there, she took care of whatever she took care of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But of course, what, what I'm saying, but again, as a police officer, if you knew that, you know, officer 
Fox <laughs> is doing something <laughs> untoward. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, yo, anonymous note to my commanding officer. Listen, I think this dude, you know, is taking bribes. I think this dude is beating people. He's being excessive. Yeah. I've seen him. But, I'm, you know, so. And I think that's where the feeling comes from people <clears> saying, <throat> you know, ACAB, right? All cops are bastards because it's like if this was happening. That one. So ACAB, you see it's people spray paint it, right? ACAB. All okay. cops are bastards. Um, so you, I mean, if that, like, obviously in any workplace, like you said, there's going to be people who are good and bad at the job. And if they do something that now kind of toes into being dangerous or being, you know, uncivil or whatever, in whatever job, right. You, there's a responsibility to tell the HR or tell safety or tell, you know, police departments have internal boards of review. Like, I'm watching a documentary right now about uh, it's on Netflix. I think it's about uh, dr- drug labs like uh, that are associated with courts and like police departments. So like if someone catches a person with a white powder on them, right. They send that to the lab and the lab tests for it. And it says, Oh, this is cocaine. Right. Um, so what I'm watching in this documentary, it's really good. I think it's called how to fix, how to fix a drug crime. Um, it's about people who are in these labs who have either uh, started taking the drugs because the work is so intense that they'll start stealing evidence and taking cocaine to keep up with the workload, or they will uh, forge the documents and say, yeah, this is cocaine, but they didn't test it. You know, like wow. every job has these people, police. Have oversights committees. Yeah, pilots. Yeah. Like how many pilots have you heard of? Because Chris Rock has that great joke, right? It's like, you can't have bad apples in the pilot. Right? Oh, exactly. <laughs> oh, I just crash. You yeah, know, I just like to, blah, we have blah, some blah. bad apples like to crash into mountains. Like you need you need the good pilots to say, hey, I think he's been drinking too much. He can't fly, you know. And so the fact that this doesn't happen and we have these events with cops happen again and again and again and again and again and again for years and decades and decades is just like enough's enough, you know. And on top of that, I think there's some really interesting – I'm going to get psycholo- psychological on you. I think there's Good. some really interesting interactions with the coronavirus, right? Because what was one of the big things that coronavirus led everyone to do was wear masks, right? And you're yeah. watching Watchmen, and you know a big theme in Watchmen is how putting on a mask kind of changes – your behavior, right? Or allows you to kind of do things maybe you wouldn't do otherwise, right? Well, it's kind of like the whole online trolls. Yeah. Since, you know, since they're anonymous behind their screen, yeah. they'd be the biggest douchebags. Yeah, and I think it goes both ways for both the cops and the protesters in that the cops are like, I haven't seen cops in non-riot gear in a long time, right? They're wearing like helmets and masks and armor and shields like they're going into, you know, freaking raid. Um, I think that puts them in a position of, you know, those people are my enemy, right? Like if you're holding a shield and you're not at a Renaissance fair, like what does that say about what your behaviors are going to be? You know, you're not going to be like, yeah, this is my shield. Check it out. It's like, you're going to protect yourself from everything, you know? And I think for the protesters too, the fact that this, that, that riots have started, I think is, I mean, I have no evidence to back this up, but might be related to, you know, the, anonymity that's gained from wearing these coronavirus masks i think it's an interesting place of research i haven't seen any of this research but i think there's an interesting relationship there um and i think it might be overall good right i think when things get a little more serious than just people walking down the street and it's like people are oh and by serious i mean corporations are seeing damages to their buildings right um i think people pay a little more attention and that is good in my opinion all right. Um, I'm gonna ask you this. Yeah. But uh, uh, do you think anything will come of this? <laughs> but before you answer that, um, I know, I don't want people whoever listens to this, mm. I don't want anybody to think that I'm pro looters. These yeah. looters are really mucking up the message. Yeah. Like, as much as I would say that it sucks to destroy somebody's property. Mm. I'd be almost more for the protesters destroying a target. 
mm-hmm. than looting a target. Yeah. Like if they were just just as a message of F you, stuff needs to change. But when you go in there and start taking stuff for yourself, yeah. that's what you're doing. You're taking a TV, taking a radio just for you. That really cheapens cheapens the, the message. If you were to just destroy the thing and all the products in there, I see that almost as, as, as a more way more powerful message. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to steal the new Lexmark printer. <laughs> this, I, I, no, I, I, I think I, I, I think I agree, right? Because I think <clears throat> at least to an extent, because we're also in a really coronavirus put us in an interesting time with jobs too, right? And I think it depends on on kind of what is being looted. Um, I agree. But I've seen videos when it's like TVs. Yeah, I, I think I, I with that I agree because it's Legos. like Legos. You seen that picture of that one white guy? <laughs> no. This is just one picture. We see a bunch of you know people of color, you know black people, you know whatever, just non-whites doing what they're doing, taking what they're taking, and you see this one white guy wearing his mask with a, like a I think like a, the Death Star or like the Millennium Falcon, like a Lego kit. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, yeah, I, I think because I mean, what is it? it displays like a a level of selfishness, right? And not that yeah. that's wrong. I, I obviously having things is good. You don't it. This is a tricky tricky tightrope. I see. I find myself walking on. Uh, I think the the image that you see is one of selfishness, and that feels like it detracts from the the communal effort of change, right? Yeah. Where it's like, I'm here because the cops are uh, harassing murdering us, us, murdering us. Yeah, seriously. But then, and I mean, all people too, right? Harassing, murdering. The cops are not doing the right thing is a collective, you know, thing to say. But mm-hmm. then when you like sneak off and, and grab a new TV, like that kind of sucks. But I, I, you know, I think the effect that looting has is very strong uh, because it's kind of like, People see protests as like, oh, it's peaceful. All right, I'll take I'll take another a route. I'll avoid the protest. Then when it's like rioting, it's like, all right, I'm not gonna go outside because things are on fire. And then when it's like rioting and looting, it's almost like, oh, things are really bad. <laughs> I feel like it kind of sits on someone differently than just, oh, there's a trash can fire. You know, it's like, oh, there's a trash can fire, and they looted the Macy's in Herald Square. <laughs> I think I, mean, I think it does thing. increase the level of severity on a on a on like a group level, right? It's like, oh, the things are getting so bad that now we're breaking into places and taking things. Uh but I think I agree. I think the 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 stronger message for like group solidarity is just destroying stuff. I don't know. I, I think this is a, a weird place to to try to judge people on. Um so I'm not going to. <laughs> <I feel laughs> if you, someone's feel going you. out there and looting, it, you know. Uh, but I like w- it. I want the so police to change to one question. way or the other. Yeah. Do you think anything's gonna change? I don't. I think no, once I don't, all this I don't think calms so. down and it's gonna be back to, you know, it's gonna be a couple of weeks. Actually, but see, I, I was just about to say some stupid ass crap. Uh. I was gonna say, oh, in a couple of weeks, it's gonna go back to cops doing stuff, but they're doing it right now in the pro- protest. Yeah. So it's like obviously nothing's changing because even right now, where people are actively protesting an issue, the issue is still being done while it's being protested yeah for you know and uh, for innocent people like like you said i've seen so many videos of people just like that one guy in the bike he's trying to get home yeah the cops grab him and beat the crap out of him with the billy clubs and it's like so what would it take to change something in in, in this country yeah i mean in the world again like I, there's so many videos and if you're listening you can just go out and find them <clears throat> there's a lot but there's one where you know a woman got groped by a cop and she like moves away from him and then they take that as like resisting and they all come and beat her in the legs until she falls down with clubs. And it's like, uh, enough, but no, I don't think things are going to change. Unfortunately, Joe Biden is the presidential nominee. Um, I think if it was someone else, I mean, I think there are several other people it could have been that would have been more forceful on this issue. Um, I don't think Joe Biden's going to, he, I don't think he has the, the energy or the spirit to really like say or the mental capacity. Enough is like enough. He has dementia. Yeah, I mean, so he does have a stutter. He the crap out of me, dude. He 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 has had a stutter all his life, and I will try to not judge that. But yeah, I mean, it could have been a lot of other people, right? I'll I'll be out there. I supported Elizabeth Warren. I liked Elizabeth Warren as a candidate. 
I think she could have been very forceful on this. I think Kamala Harris could have been very forceful on it. And she has her own problems with being, you know, a district attorney or a lawyer in California. I think uh, Cory Booker could have been amazing on this. You know, he was the mayor of Newark and now he's a senator from New Jersey. I think there are a lot of people who were candidates on the Democratic side who could have had the, the, the stance or the posture to say, like, this will change and I will see to it that it changes. Joe Biden may have said that, but like, I just can't, I can't muster any feeling that it is going to happen with him, which is unfortunate. Just to kind of steer the conversation somewhere else. Sorry. Um, <laughs> are there any, uh, cause again, you, you, you know, you know me again, you know me and I don't, I don't really follow politics yeah. that well, you know, I just kind of see what I see here. I grab what little information kind of falls on my face. Yeah. And I think but that's like my, most voters too. I, th- I think most voters are like that, which is fine. Yeah, like I, I really don't educate myself, which is the the, the word. But um, is there any rep- Republican candidate that you would have wanted in office? I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think, like, I mean, I think any Republican would have been better than Donald Trump. Um, well, not saying much. <laughs> I know. I th- I think Mitt Romney would have been better. I think John McCain, had he still been alive, would have been better. You know, he ran 08 against Obama. But when you compare, you know, Obama to McCain, I go, yeah, Obama, definitely. But if it was like anyone versus Donald Trump, except for a few, like Mike Pence, the vice president, I think is well, a, that guy's evil. a crazy, evil, Christo, Christo anarchist. You know who he reminds me of? Who? He reminds me of every single villain <laughs> that will always say, you kill those muties, you know, in the X Men comics. Uh-huh. You know, he wants to have those guys, like those <laughs> people in power in the X Men universe, where there's always this guy with, you know, kill all muties, and yeah, that, he reminds me of that guy. Yeah, you know, and the the whole, you know, like I, I I've never been, well, I say never, but until about maybe ten years ago, fifteen years ago, I was kind of like ho hum with the whole with the whole gay thing. Uh huh. You know, I'm like ah, whatever, you're gay, but you know, yeah. you know. Uh huh. Until my daughter's friends his parents kicked him out when wow. they found out that he was you know gay yeah and i took him into my home you That's know i'm good like i'm not you. gonna have this kid living on the streets i can't do that yeah and, you know I, and i was a little weary because i wasn't too whatever but then I, I realized how stupid that was yeah and i ended up you know loving this kid like a like a son yeah and so this one kid kind of changed my again w- what i'm saying sounds like if, like, like if i was anti-gay right but i wasn't yeah, uh, at all. It was like, just similar. Like it's not something that really. It was just weird. Yeah, you know, to me, it you just know, doesn't affect me, your life. And this, so, this, well, he's a grown man now. <laughs> <laughs> having him living in my house for about two years, and you know, I, I, I really fell in love with this kid. Like, yeah. I, you know, like a son. Yeah. And you know, the fact that his parents kicked him out the house because he was gay, and I mean, I'm now I'm, I'm all like, love is, love is love. Yeah. Why does it matter to you if I love a man, a woman, or a frog? How is that hurting you? How is yeah. it hurting you if yeah. I, you know what i love so you know that kind of stuff so you know and like and people t- like my friends you know i talk sometimes you know and i'm like i i, I don't lean right or le- i just lean with what feels right yeah you know because I, I realize sometimes some you know both democrats and republicans you know they always stick to their corner i'm like I, but that's why i don't associate with either yeah i go with what feels right it feels wrong for a cop to kill an unarmed black man yeah when he's pleading for his life, that 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 seems wrong, mm-hmm. you know. So I just go well, what 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 feels wrong or or right. Like there's been very few things I can't think of top of my head right now that Mr. Trump has said that I'm okay. I agree with what he said. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Not often, but it has happened. Yeah. But I feel sometimes some people they're just so stuck and they you know they paint themselves into this corner. There's either red or this blue corner, and they refuse to move from that corner just because they're red or blue. I'm like, just go with your gut. Yeah. And that's what that's how I go. I go with whatever feels right whoever's saying it i don't care it could be freaking i'd be shocked if mike pence says something that i would agree with <laughs> but if he did i'd be like oh man well that makes sense you know yeah. what i'm saying no and i and I, I yeah i agree like i i remember very clearly when donald trump met with kim kardashian and they were they were working out prison reform and they came to a conclusion about you know drug offenses and stuff and i was like yeah i agree with that but like when you take the whole package, right? You have to you, you vote for a whole package, right? It's yeah. like it's like there's one grain of sugar in here and the rest are all grains of 
I can't curse, but let's just call it salt. But I'm thinking of something else that's brown. Uh, it's like it's like yeah, I know there's some sugar in there, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take this, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, it's you know it's hard to say. I because uh, I've seen like one of my good friends. Oh, and this is gonna lead to a point. Um, one of my good friends posted that I, I'm sure you've seen that picture of Martin Luther King. Was like, oh, March peacefully changed the world, and I'm like, did he? <laughs> like I, I actually posted that in her, in her comments. I'm like, did he? Yeah. Did he really? Did he change anything? What did he really change? I mean, I know there were certain things that were changed, slight things. Hey, Martin like, Luther King changed a bunch of stuff. <laughs> but I'm saying, but we, cops are still killing black yes, people. Yes, no, that's true. Inherit yes. racism in the country. And Martin Luther King also said that riots are the language of the unheard. So yes, you know, so it's like I think Martin Luther King said a lot of different things that a lot of different sides can use. <laughs> you know, yeah, but I'm, but I was like, hmm, but like. I feel like it's still racially divided just as it was back then. Yeah. I mean, there's certain laws that are different now, like the whole segregation and all this crap. But in, I know there's certain places, go go to the deep south, be a black man and try to go to some privately owned store. Let's see yeah. what happens. Or, I you know, mean, like some of that even, stuff is still ingrained. Or even try on Long Island. I mean, we had talked about Dude, this. Dude, man, I'm so disappointed. I think I must have put a veil. Because I, I was talking, I mean, I was talking to Nick yeah. via text message. I'm like, um, this is a town over here called Port Jefferson. They got really good food over there. My daughter went over there to go to this place called Slurp Ramen. Mm -hmm. I've been to Japan, and I tell you, the ramen in Slurp Ramen <laughs> is on point. <laughs> Anyways, so as she was walking through this little little walk area, they got yeah. this lined with stores. She saw a big giant sign that said um, "Impeach um, um, Cuomo." Cuomo. Yeah. And I I hit Nick up about it. He's like, "Yo, dude, he's like Suffolk County is pretty much like a you know all like conservative." I'm like, "What?" Yeah. Like I live here. <laughs> Are yeah. you sure? Well, and I mean. I, between both the politics and like the racial redlining that's inherent on Long Island, like you could go to anyone from Long Island and just be like, name the black towns on Long Island. Everyone's going to name you the same five towns because like the history of like home ownership and redlining, which is like where realtors don't suggest certain neighborhoods and only suggest <laughs> like certain ones so to people. Be like Wine Dance, uh, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, Wine Dance, Brentwood, Freeport, like. Uh, Gordon Heights, like you can name because like there's 60 years of it. Apparently, Robert Moses and the development of like the highways on Long Island made them so that public transit can't support certain neighborhoods. Like it's like really when you talk about structural racism, Long Island's a great example of it. Unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. I mean, we both it's terrible. It's a place that's in both of our hearts, but uh, it's it has a lot of problems. But uh, yeah, I mean, Long Island in po politically, what's his name? Steve King. Is that his name? The the representative of Suffolk County District One, uh, the how the the U.S. House representative. He's like a crazy Republican. He's not just like I'm a Republican, like Mitt Romney, like I vote for money and stuff and religion. He is like way out there, um, and Suffolk County voted for Trump really strongly. So <laughs> that sucks. Nassau is not so great either, right? There were some videos of. Uh, anti-protest protests uh, yes, from like Merrick. <laughs> and my friend, my, my good friend, he posted a sign. <coughs> he was driving. He's like, oh, this guy, when he saw me, <coughs> pardon me, he, he put the sign down. The sign said, uh, get rid of the hard N-word. Wow. You know, and I'm like, I'm like, whoa, wait, did somebody gave you this pic? Somebody sent you this from, I'm being serious. I, I seriously asked him this question. I'm like, did somebody send you this from like down south or some shit? Yeah. He was like, no. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. Like, really? But, and, and this, I'm going to say this one last thing. Yeah. It was running a bit long. Yeah. And we could but, go on for hours about this. I, I know. Think. We could probably stay here for like freaking till three o'clock. But, um, so George Floyd got killed, right? Yeah. I've seen a lot of my minority friends posting the day of, you know, oh, this is messed up. This is wrong. You know, police, blah, 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 blah. Most of the people who I know who are white, not all, but most, they didn't say a word. M mind you, they didn't say a word against it, mm -hmm. but they didn't say a word pro it. They just didn't, whatever. But then when the the protest started, and I know there was a cop that was killed, immediately I see posts from all these white people. They're like, oh, oh these looters, these rioters, they're going to kill the innocent cops. That's all messed up. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on, let me see. So I started checking these people. I started going to the profile and scrolling <laughs> back to the day where... <laughs> Mr. Floyd was killed. Yeah. Nothing. Not a peep. 
But then when a white cop is killed, at that point they're like, "Oh, that is messed up." They start posting and they start making they start making noise. Yeah. But no noise was made when they saw that this cop, I mean, that the, the, this this black gentleman was asphyxiated in a public street for eight minutes in broad Nothing daylight too. Like it's like everything that goes everything that would be bad was bad. You know, but like I said, it's funny how I, I see noise being made for a cop, but nothing was made. Not even a not even a repost. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Not even a a, a a a share of what happened. Nothing. Yeah. But now, when it's a person who is of their skin complexion, now they're all of a sudden outraged, and I'm like, that's the problem right yeah. there. Like they put a blind eye to. The, mind you, everybody knew about this. Mm-hmm. Now, I was talking to my friend. Uh, you met him, Frankie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The heavy set guy, glasses. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm you always about say it. that. That's not a nice thing to say. Frankie's gonna <laughs> listen and be like, "Why does he always call me the heavy set guy?" <laughs> well, you know, you I'm heavy set. It's it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, he also leans a bit right, not mm-hmm. too much, you know. But he leans a bit right, you know. Like I think I think he's a he's a poor to Trump, whatever. Mm-hmm. But you know, but he's not completely that, you know, that much into yeah. that direction. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm like, but dude, everybody know about this, but nobody made a sound. Uh, uh, mind you, again. All the people who I know who are minorities or or more woke, <laughs> but like all these people, which you know, when I say all these people, I'm probably talking about maybe like 15 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not one of those. I'm not one of those folks that got like 3,000 Facebook friends. You know, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Anyway, but they, they didn't say a word when Mr. Floyd was killed. Not yeah. even a share. Damn, nothing. But then when the cop was killed, oh, these people are disgusting. These animals should be put behind bars. And I'm like. Word is, is that's how it is. Yeah, I mean, it's like if they didn't say anything, period, at all, I can understand that to an extent because also like, and this is terrible to say, but like just in the very recent, just in 2020, there's been so much of this, right? There was the woman, well, there's the guy that the the cop entered his house by accident and killed him. Remember that one? <coughs> she, the, 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 one the one when the girlfriend got killed? Who was like a no, no, no. See, there's so many, you can't even keep them straight. <laughs> Which one, man? No, so this was there was a female cop and she lived in an apartment building. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And yes. she went up to the wrong floor, but same, you know, the apartment below her apartment. Allegedly. Allegedly, right? Uh, walked in and killed the guy in his home. Then there's the one where the the girlfriend who was an EMT got killed because they were executing a search warrant on the wrong person. Like Yeah, a a, a no knock raid. Yeah, no, just bursting into the house. They had the wrong person, and they and killed he her. He defended himself. Yeah, of course, because like that's the other side of this, right? Second Amendment people are like, oh well, you have to protect yourself from intruders and whatever. Like, and even if he, I say Second Amendment, but even if he didn't have a gun, like whatever. Like when someone intrudes your house, like your first instinct is protection, of course. Yeah. So, and that goes for anybody. Uh, and then there was the guy who was jogging, who got hunted down by, by those white guys in a truck just a few weeks ago. Like That one, I cannot wrap my head around that one. Yeah, and you saw the video too, right? It's, it's yeah. I don't get how. These are two civilians. Yeah. These aren't cops. Three. Well, there's the guy recording too. And nothing happened. Yeah. And nothing would have happened unless, I think I read there was the lawyer, they released it because he felt it would even less incriminate them. Yeah. Some, some sort of logic he thought. What they did was right. So I would hate to speak to this lawyer and see how the hell his head is hung. Yeah. You know? And I don't get it. Like, two, if it was, again, if it was an old six, 70 year old black man and his younger son and they hunt down a white man who's jogging, they would have been hung before anything would have happened. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I think that speaks exactly to the problem, right? It's like, it's not just about who, it's about race, right? It's about that there's just systematic differences and how the law is applied to people of different races and it it sucks i mean it really sucks i hope i guess in closing i I truly hope from the bottom of my heart that something changes like i know you know i have a perfectly beautiful little grandson Mm -hmm. who's a who's a lot he was a mixed latino child and i would love for him to like when maybe he's my age There's something different going on. I don't think it's going to happen in, in the next couple of decades. I don't no. see nothing happening. <laughs> you know, I think what needs to happen, okay, I know I said already I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to last point I'll make, Yeah. but I think these people who've been in Congress for 30 years, these 60, 70, 80 years, they need to die off. <laughs> that whole generation just needs to die. And I, I forgot, uh, 
Wasn't it Oprah that said that? I think it was. Oprah. Yes, it was. Uh, Oprah said that. What did like, she say? These, the, these people, I mean, I, I'm sure I'm not saying the quote exactly, okay. but you can look it up. <laughs> You know, and, and she was quoted out of context saying, like, they should be killed. And what she's saying of, they need to live their life and die and go away to get rid of that, that entire generation that, you know, they're still in office for 30 years. I definitely you know, think old 70 year old racist people who they're not going to change. I mean, unfortunately, you know I mean, you I'm so I yes, I agree. I think a I think there should be term limits. B, that's crazy. Yeah. And B, you know, there's a saying in academia that change happens one funeral at a time. So, so yes, <laughs> I like, like that. that too, right? Like progress happens as, you know, kind of the generations change. But you just shared something on social media the other day of people who aren't that old who are doing the George Floyd challenge. Oh, and I don't know if, if, if you're listening and you haven't seen this, it's basically white people imitating the position of the cop and George Floyd Ugh. on the ground. Um, Disgusting. A, I don't understand how people don't have shame. Like that they're like, yeah, this is a great idea. I'll do it. I'll take a picture of it and I'll post it publicly on social media to show other people. It's absolutely disgusting. But they're not young, right? I mean, they're not that's old. True. So and, now, uh, may, I don't know. Maybe that that's not the solution. Time. I don't know. But like, but maybe these people. But then again, do you see these folks who are doing the George Floyd challenge getting an office? Uh, probably not. They probably, no, they, they probably don't have the mental capacity. I, I hope that's true. I hope oh that's God, true. They don't shut up. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> come on, to, man. To end the show on a little bit more of a positive note, uh, I, I think we both share the feeling that, you know, things need to change. And I hope that this is at least a, a step in the direction towards change. And I agree. I don't oh. think we're going to see immediate change. But at least if this is some sort of moment that helps people look back and say, okay, this is where we don't want to be ever again, where it's, you know, the, I mean, the police killing unarmed black people, uh, the protests where police are attacking peaceful protesters and bystanders. If we can look at this, hopefully, and say, this is a place we don't want to be. Let's make some sort of change. That would be a good thing. Like, I would love one day to listen to this podcast and laugh at how stupid we sound. I would love that. I would love to say, wow, remember when it. that was a thing and they had to talk about that? How silly we were. I yeah. would love to, you know... I mean, that could also go the other way too, right? I recently rewatched V for Vendetta. That is a very interesting movie to watch right now. Uh, I haven't seen it in, dec in a long time. Maybe so I should. You should rewatch it because it, it's all about uh, totalitarianism taking place after a viral pandemic. Um, so, Wait, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about how. Holy crap! It's all about how uh, there was a virus that killed eighty thousand people, and from that. Uh, there was an election. No there was an election shortly after, and then shortly after the election, there was a cure for the virus. And yeah, so go watch it. Um, really? Okay, I, I'm gonna. I've been gonna watch it today. Go watch it, Hugo Weaving. Come on, Hugo Weaving as V is spot on. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I mean, it's really interesting to watch. You know, then also the the virus also ha helped cause uh, riots and looting and uh, police crackdowns and. Holy Holy crap. Yeah. So I hope, you know, that we don't go the other way where we say, man, remember when it was just that? And now it's like the police will attack everybody all the time. I'm hoping that in the future, this will be the low point and we'll go up. So uh, yeah. with that, I'm going to cue in the outro music. This has been kind of a serious podcast, but it's good to have serious Ooh. podcasts every now and then. <coughs> Remind us, uh, you know, that yeah, things man. are important. Uh, so hopefully... Everyone gets their mental rejuvenation. Stay serious, but also take care of yourself. You know, Mariana and I, it's like, oh, we feel so exhausted after these past two weeks. It's just so much to to work on. I know. Right? Your, your, your brains just get fried. I feel you, brother. So take care of yourself, but also stay vigilant. I have friends who are out there in the protest, so stay safe. Um, you can catch us on Instagram. <laughs> I know, right? At we talk at you. We're also on Twitter. Yay, video games. Yeah, we'll talk about some. We'll try to talk about some fun stuff, but also, you know, keep in mind the important stuff that's going on too. Uh, there's gonna be woodworking projects happening soon. We'll keep you posted. Uh, and until next time, Eli, I will talk to you later. Smoked chickens. Smoked chickens. <laughs>